On today's episode, we are looking at a new battery update to the Tesla Model 3, the Boring Company expanding their Hyperloop to the Vegas Strip, another delay for Giga Berlin, and progress on Tesla's 4680 battery cell to go along with new production and prototype updates for the Cybertruck. So let's get going. Tesla has confirmed that they are transitioning all Model 3 standard range production to lithium iron or LFP battery chemistry at their Fremont factory. We know that production on the Model 3 standard range at Giga Shanghai has been using LFP chemistry for over a year and there have been a few LFP powered Model 3s showing up for the first time in the United States just recently. And now Tesla is confirming that this battery configuration will be the new normal for all American made standard range plus versions of the Model 3. This is a change that we've been expecting to see for a little while now. Elon posted on Twitter in September that he expects the majority of lithium ion batteries will transition to LFP chemistry. Elon said that for the global battery industry to scale up production levels of 10 terawatts or more per year, then it needs to be mostly iron based. The advantages to the LFP cells over the current standard of nickel based chemistry are a comparatively low cost and greater availability of materials. Elon has said that there are vast amounts of iron and lithium on earth, but much less nickel. LFP cells are also known to have longer cycle lives, meaning they can be charged and discharged more often without seeing a degradation in performance. On the downside, LFP is a much less energy dense chemistry than nickel. So you'd never be able to get an exceptionally long range with this kind of battery. Having said that, Elon still expects that we can get up to 300 miles of range from an LFP pack, which is more than most competing automakers can squeeze from nickel based cells right now anyways. The other downside is that LFP cells are currently only produced in China. So the standard range plus model three in America will be relying on battery cells to arrive via cargo ship while the long range and performance cells are manufactured in Nevada. We'll get deeper into this with a new video coming soon. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up today if you like it. The Hertz vehicle rental company has announced that they will purchase 100,000 Tesla Model 3 vehicles for their fleet in a deal reportedly worth $4.2 billion, making it the single largest order for electric vehicles ever. Hertz launched a new advertising campaign Monday morning that featured quarterback Tom Brady and positioned themselves as the right place to come for anyone who wants to rent an EV. The cars will be delivered over the next 14 months and Tesla's Model 3 sedans will be available to rent at Hertz locations in major US cities and parts of Europe starting in early November. Hertz also announced plans to build their own network of EV charging stations. In an interview, Hertz interim CEO Mark Field said, quote, Tesla is the only manufacturer that can produce EVs at scale. Besides the obvious benefit of closing the world's largest EV sale ever, this is also an interesting free marketing opportunity for Tesla as Hertz will give millions of people the opportunity to test drive a Tesla for the first time, which will only continue to increase demand for Tesla products. Tesla stock price shot up Monday morning on the news at the time of writing, Tesla stock had reached a new all-time high of $997 per share, surpassing the previous all-time high of $995 per share. Tesla will hit a market capitalization of $1 trillion. The Boring Company is one step closer to building their biggest Hyperloop project yet under the city of Las Vegas. The Clark County Nevada Commissioner's Board approved a franchise agreement with the Boring Company that gives them permission to install and operate a transportation system below the Vegas Strip. The Boring Company plans to install 29 miles of tunnel with 51 stations, 
up to 57,000 passengers could be transported every hour using Tesla vehicles that will, in theory, eventually be able to drive autonomously at high speeds through the narrow tunnels. There will be no public funding provided to the construction of the Las Vegas Loop. The boring company will self-fund the entire project and earn back the expenses by collecting fares from riders. The company will pay a quarterly franchise fee to the city of Las Vegas in exchange for the use of their land or underland. I don't know the technicalities. This is a really unique way to approach public transit. Usually the city government would pay a company a large sum of money to build them a transit system and then the city would recoup the expense by taking over fare collection. This boring company deal is the opposite and in this case it makes a lot of sense. By putting the financial burden and payoff on the builder slash operator, it really incentivizes them to provide and maintain a high quality product that stays profitable in the long term. This sounds like a win-win scenario. Just as a personal anecdote here, I live in a city that recently spent over $2 billion on a small light rail system that only has a dozen stations. In the two years since the train has been operating, it has never worked properly. Breaks down all the damn time. We had two derailments in September and the system has been shut down completely for over a month while they try and figure out if it's even safe to continue using. So I know for a lot of people in theory, trains sound like a better idea than Tesla's in a tunnel, but light rail comes with its own set of problems. In an announcement that will shock no one, the German government is again delaying the final approval for vehicle production at Tesla's Giga Berlin factory. What is it this time you might ask? Well, apparently the government has chosen to stop and redo their public consultation process because the people of Brandenburg were not given enough of an advanced notice that online public consultations were beginning. Turns out that there is a stipulation in the law that says the government must give public notice at least seven days in advance of the public discussion. They didn't do that. An environmentalist group called them out on it, and to rectify the situation, the government has chosen to just do the whole thing over again, this time with seven days of warning that it is going to happen. That means online public consultation will open again for objections to the Gigafactory project on November 2nd and be ongoing until November 22nd, after which the government will have to review feedback and make decisions on any actions that need to be taken to follow up. What we can gather from that is definitely no cars produced at Giga Berlin in November even though Elon had been hopeful that it could happen. And then maybe if nothing major comes up from this new round of feedback, we finally see approval granted and production line activity begin sometime in December. We are getting even more positive news from Tesla regarding the rollout of the new 4680 battery cell and structural pack technology. On their third quarter earnings call, Tesla executives seemed to indicate that battery cell production from the Cato Road facility in Fremont is on track to support vehicle production in the final quarter of 2021. And that testing of the new Model Y design with the structural battery pack and dual castings is due to be completed by early next year. Deliveries to customers will follow soon after product testing is finished that could very well still happen in the first half of 2022. At least that seems to be the situation. This was the first earnings call where Elon Musk wasn't on the phone, just blurting out all of the details, and the executives were taking a more traditional approach of playing their cards close to their chest. In more good news for battery cells, we've just seen Panasonic show off their version of the 4680 battery cell, and the Japanese company has indicated that their test production for the new battery will begin by March 2022. Panasonic has been a long-standing partner in battery cell manufacturing, with Tesla providing the design and Panasonic bringing added capacity to production. This timeline seems to be keeping in step with the 4680 reaching volume production in late 2022. Tesla did indicate that they are using a mixture of contracts with various suppliers of raw materials to keep their production moving forward. Earlier this month, they signed a new supply deal for 42,000 tons of nickel over a multi-year period. 
but they still expect volatility in material prices that will prevent challenges into the future. Tesla restated that their goal in the long term is still to drive down the cost of their products over time. Tesla announced plans to triple the span of their supercharger network over the next two years. During the recent Q3 earnings call, Tesla executives were questioned on supercharger wait times at specific high volume locations, which we know are in desperate need of improvement. Tesla's senior vice president of powertrain and energy engineering stepped up to answer the supercharging question, saying, quote, we are executing accelerating expansion plans globally. The network has doubled in the last 18 months, and we are planning to triple it over the next two years. He also shared that Tesla has implemented roadmap software improvements and dynamic routing so drivers can avoid busy superchargers. The company is likewise improving its trip planner feature, specifically how it estimates driver's energy consumption during their trips. Improvements to the trip planner should hopefully decrease the driver's need to charge while on the road. We've got another small but promising update on the Tesla Cybertruck. The company has confirmed that there are now multiple alpha prototypes of the truck out there that are testing new features. Tesla executives say that the company is further maturing the design of the Cybertruck. Tesla indicated that they are testing key additional features in the new builds like rear wheel steering, but also tease that there are less visible improvements that are being developed as well. Executives confirm that Tesla is working with multiple suppliers of stainless steel to ensure there will be enough available to produce the Cybertruck and meet customer demand. As for when the production might begin, Tesla is sticking to the timeline that Cybertruck will start once Model Y production is ramped up at Giga Texas. From everything we've heard so far, that still sounds like late 2022 is going to be a realistic expectation. For more Tesla news delivered straight to your inbox, make sure to subscribe to our Tesla Space newsletter. We keep you up to date on all things Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and Boring Company in one quick and fun to read package. Link in the description to sign up. It's theteslaspace.com. And make sure to drag our emails over into your primary inbox so we don't get lost in the promotions tab. Also, don't forget to check out our new Space Race channel and subscribe over there for even more space exploration content. As always, if you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.